Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I'll be discussing susceptibility part 2 in which I'll be telling you all the classification of susceptibility, the factors on which it depends on and other factors which modify susceptibility. Please do see, your, see my video, give it a like, thumbs up and forward it to your friends. Thank you so much. Today we see the second part of the lecture on susceptibility. So in the first part, we had seen the introduction, we had seen the aphorism references in sixth edition of Organon of Medicine and two important factors for susceptibility to take place. Now we go further than that. So let us see what part two has in store for us. So in part two, I will tell you the classification of susceptibility, the basic factors which affect susceptibility and also the other factors which modify the state of susceptibility. So the classification, we can classify susceptibility into three broad groups or types. The first type is normal, abnormal, morbid or pathological. So in the first type of classification, we, have to, we can say that the susceptibility is normal or it is abnormal or pathological or morbid. Meaning what? Normal susceptibility meaning what? It means that the vital force is in harmony with the external and the, and the internal environment. So as long as the vital force is functioning properly or is adapting itself to the external and the internal environment, normal health will be maintained or homeostasis is maintained or the, or the internal milieu is in harmony. That is why the person enjoys a state of good health. So good health or normal health, meaning that the susceptibility is normal. Now when the human body or the human organism is being constantly subjected to the environmental factors, then what happens? The vital force cannot adapt itself because it gets weakened. So as a result of it, it gets deranged and it comes into a disease state. So therefore, why does it come into a disease state? Number one, there's a failure of adaptation. And second, the susceptibility, which was normal has been deranged. So in other words, deranged susceptibility is abnormal susceptibility, which is equal to an disease condition. So therefore, in a disease condition, susceptibility will be abnormal. Why? Because it has been deranged. And as the disease moves forward from the functional plane to the structural plane, to the pathological plane, we get the morbid signs and symptoms. That is the pathology. So the pathology, as I told you, could be a reversible pathology if the disease is in an early stage, or it could be an irreversible pathology if the disease has advanced to a considerable stage wherein you cannot reverse the pathology, or the patient has come to us at the very later stages. So this is the first type, normal susceptibility and abnormal susceptibility or pathological susceptibility. Second classification is quantitative susceptibility and qualitative susceptibility. So by the word quantitative susceptibility, it deals with the quantity. So therefore we can say that you can classify susceptibility as high susceptibility or medium susceptibility or low susceptibility. So high or low in between, this is known as the medium susceptibility. Or you can say that the susceptibility in the quantitative type is heightened. That is increased SORA or the tubercular myosin or heightened SORA or the tubercular myosin. Or it could be reduced there is inactivity, there is poor reaction giving rise to the 
psychotic medicine. So therefore, in quantitative, it is high, it is low, it can be heightened or it can be reduced. In qualitative, out here, you see there's a change in direction of susceptibility. So th because we are dealing with the quality. So when will a quality be seen? It will be seen when the susceptibility changes its direction. For example, the disease travels from periphery to center, from skin to mucous membranes, from the mind to the body, or it goes from sora, psychosis, tubercular to the syphilitic mass. So it deals with the quality. But the third type of classification can be just simple increased or decreased susceptibility. So in an disease condition also, you may, you may get susceptibility which is increased or susceptibility which is decreased. Now, let's go to the second point, that is the basic factors which affects the susceptibility. Number one, age. So susceptibility is increased or it increases from birth and it goes on increasing from birth to infancy to childhood and in old age it decreases. So in a nutshell, susceptibility diminishes with age, maximum seen in the neonate and when susceptibility is high and in old age it is very low. Then sex, in pregnant women after delivery, the susceptibility is high or increased. In similarity of remedy, third part, we say that susceptibility is increased when more the similar the remedy with, which has characteristic symptoms in the case or more finer symptoms given, we say that the susceptibility is high. So more the symptom similarity, more will be the susceptibility and naturally high will be the potency selection. And decreased susceptibility will be less similarity of the remedy, presence of common symptoms in a case, therefore potency given will be low. So if you have a similar remedy and not the similar remedy, the similar remedy will exhibit decreased susceptibility because it has common symptoms. So more the common symptoms, less, uh, uh, less similarity is the remedy, therefore susceptibility is less. And more the similimum or more you can match the symptoms correctly, which are characteristic, then that remedy will show an increased susceptibility. Then constitution and temperament. Susceptibility is increased in people who are very sensitive, who are nervous, who have a sanguine or choleric temperament, very intelligent or intellectual persons, or people who are quick to react, who are zealous and impulsive. And decreased susceptibility will be seen in torpid and phlegmatic individuals, people who have dull comprehension, who are slow to react, sluggish individuals. Also persons who possess great muscular power, but require powerful stimulus to excite them. Habit and environment. Increased susceptibility seen in people having intellectual occupation like managers, directors, CEO of big companies, by excitement of emotions and imaginations, or having a sedentary of the, uh, occupation or by long sleep. Whereas decreased susceptibility is seen in people who are accustomed to long and severe outdoor labor. Pathological conditions. Susceptibility will be in functional disorders, it will be increased, whereas in advanced pathological cases or in terminal conditions where the power to react to the indicated homeopathic medicine will be so low that only metal dose can arouse it, susceptibility is less. So in short, functional disturbance it is high, pathological disturbances it is low, especially when the pathology is irreversible. The character of disease. In acute disease or in functional pathology or reversible pathology, 
or pathology in the initial stages, in the beginning, in the beginning stages, the susceptibility is increased. Whereas in a chronic disease with advanced pathology, susceptibility is decreased. Or even chronic diseases or other diseases having an insidious onset. Now, other factors which may modify susceptibility. This is the predisposition of the patient. Now, the, as I told you in my previous lecture on pathology, the predisposition is seen in the case from the family history and it is supported by the past history of the patient. So, we are seeing, so by Perceiving the family history supported by the past history of the patient, we are arriving at the conclusion of the fundamental miasm. So each miasm will have a different type of, of susceptibility. For example, if the fundamental miasm is sora, the susceptibility will be high. If it is psychotic, it will be low. Then disposition. As I told you, in my lectures on pathology, the synonyms are type, typology, constitution. So in disposition, what are we seeing? We are seeing the constitution of the individual, the built of the individual, the mental makeup, as well as the physical attributes. So each of them will have, each disposition will have a different type of susceptibility and it will depend partly on the fundamental miasm, but mainly it is acquired to the patient's walk in life. So if the constitution is weak, lean, thin, unhealthy skin with great itching, mentally the patient is irritable, anger, short tempered, and on the physical level, there are burning sensations or sensation as if or there are functional disturbances, we come to know that the patient has a soric disposition. Therefore, the susceptibility is high. So it will depend upon, again, upon the miasm, what miasm is there, and accordingly, the disposition will vary. And also the susceptibility will also change. Now, expressions. In expressions, they are reflected through the signs and symptoms. So the vital force is deranged. We cannot see the derangement except through the expressions of signs and symptoms. So if the symptoms are very well clear or if the symptom is a complete symptom or if we get a well-rounded picture of the disease, we know that the susceptibility is high. Patient is exhibiting characteristic symptoms at all levels. So what are those levels? He's exhibiting character symptoms at the level of mind. Mind can be also dissected at the level of will, emotion, intellect, and subconscious. And also, it, the character symptoms are seen at the physical general level, the, the physical particular level, as well as the pathological level. So whenever a fresh case has come to a homeopathic doctor, or whenever no suppressive treatment is taken in the past and the patient comes to the homeopathic doctor. Generally speaking, the susceptibility is high and the patient is exp expressing characteristic symptoms at all levels on the mental, physical genitals, physical particulars and, the, and, at, and also at the level of pathology. It becomes very simple for us to identify the remedy because the symptoms are peculiar, uncommon, singular, rare at all these levels. Now, then, even at different phases of the disease, the susceptibility will vary. So you have to identify the phase of the disease to give you some examples. It could be an acute phase, chronic phase, it could be a subacute phase, terminal phase, obscure phase, it could be a one-sided disease, could be an episodic disease, intermittent disease, periodic disease, etc. So some examples I can give you that if it's an acute phase, we know that in acute phase, the symptoms are characteristic, sudden outburst of latent SORA, the susceptibility is generally high. 
whereas in a chronic phase it is insidious the patient may have taken suppressive treatment or may not have taken and patient will exhibit both common and characteristic symptoms whereas if patient comes in a terminal stage then we know that the susceptibility has been hampered with the susceptibility is low and the patient will only give common symptoms which are characteristic or rather which are characteristic of the disease diagnosis and not of the drug diagnosis so therefore or patient may come to an, an obscure condition wherein the symptoms are not very clear you cannot get a complete symptom or you may not get a particular modality or you may not get a particular sensation something is missing with respect to location sensation modality and concomitant or the symptoms are very hazy they are very unclear they are very ill defined you cannot prescribe because of suppression therefore it is known as an obscure phase in which the susceptibility is quite low so therefore different phases different levels of susceptibility i repeat in acute high chronic generally speaking it will be low or it may be high it depends upon upon the upon the previous treatment taken in terminal cases naturally it will be low and in obscure condition also or or in obscure phase also it will be very less because of the suppression taking place next point is evolution of the disease that means as i told you in the in my lecture on my video separate video on evolution of the disease that the disease travels from the dynamic level to the functional level the structural level the pathological level so the susceptibility also will vary so at the dynamic level it has been deranged it goes on to the functional level generally at the functional level susceptibility is high as the disease advances and structural changes are coming or pathological changes are coming the susceptibility goes low and if the pathology is reversible the susceptibility may be high or may be low it depends upon the case and if it is irreversible pathology then definitely the susceptibility will be low then drug similarity more similar the remedy higher is the susceptibility and higher is the potency selection whereas less similar remedy lower is the susceptibility and lower is the potency so the degree of similarity will tell you about the state of susceptibility so it will depend upon the totality you are erecting if the totality is characteristics is a characteristic totality and your matching the disease with the drug totality and you are getting maximum similarity then we know that susceptibility is high otherwise if you are not getting maximum similarity you are only getting similarity at a few levels that means what you are not choosing you are not choosing the similimum but you are choosing a similar drug or you are choosing a drug which is very superficial acting therefore susceptibility will be low now in cases of suppression as i told you in an obscure picture when suppression takes place generally speaking the picture is obscure as i told you symptoms are hazy ill defined they are not complete and become difficult for us to prescribe so an obscure picture you may get a paucity of symptom that means what very few symptoms indicating susceptibility is low or you may get a maze of symptoms indicating susceptibility is high or you may get a an one sided or a complicated case or picture indicating susceptibility is low now in palliation that means palliation as i told you is always done in an case where the pathology has been advanced there is end organ damage and you cannot reverse the change therefore in an advanced pathological condition where changes are irreversible pathology the susceptibility is generally low why because here what do we get we we only get those pathological symptoms which are generally common in nature which are indicative of the diagnosis of the disease 
it doesn't help us to diagnose the homeopathic medicine based on the totality or on the qualitative totality. Therefore, in such cases, we can only do palliation. Then miasms. So it depends upon the miasm. So in a case where to identify the two types of miasm, very on, on a very broad classification, the dominant miasm or the presenting miasm and the fundamental miasm. So the dominant miasm is obtained from dominant miasm is obtained from the chief complaint of the patient or the presenting complaint of the patient and the fundamental miasm is obtained from the family history of the patient supported by the past history of the patient. So it depends upon what symptoms are there. Accordingly, you have to know your miasms very well in order to come to a conclusion as to what is the miasmatic activity. So if the miasm is sora, the susceptibility is high. If it is psychosis, susceptibility is low. If it is tubercular, that is combination of sora and the syphilitic miasm, it is heightened or it is high. So the other word for tubercular miasm is known as heightened sora. Whatever symptoms of sora are there, they are heightened in the tubercular miasm. And in the syphilitic miasm, the susceptibility is very, very, very low. Then homeopathic posology. So in order to identify that, we have to see what is the state of susceptibility. So for the potency selection in my lexical pathology, I have told you that in order to select the correct potency, we have to judge the state of susceptibility. So higher is the susceptibility, higher is the potency, lower is the susceptibility, lower is the potency. And the dose also in an acute condition, generally susceptibility gets exhausted very fast. So frequent repetition is necessary. Whereas in a chronic condition, we have to give a dose, wait and watch and see the reaction. If no reaction is there, then multiple dose stimulation can be given. Then remedy reaction. We have to see the response or the state of susceptibility after administrating the simulator. So the commonest aggravations or commonest reactions which take place are aggravations, amelioration or status quo. Okay, I give you an example in aggravation. The first aggravation in Kent's observation is prolonged aggravation with final decline in health of the patient. It is also known as killer's aggravation. So why does this occur? This occurs because the case was an advanced pathological case. You have given the simulimum in the high potency with or, with or without frequent repetition. So, it, so the mistake you have made is that, that whenever a pathology is advanced, always give the low potency in and single dose stimulation should be given because the susceptibility also will will vary in such instances. Okay, so remedy reaction also, each remedy reaction has a different state of susceptibility. So friends, in this lecture, we have concluded and be tuned for part three, which will be the last part of susceptibility in which I'll be telling you much more information or I will be telling you the views of different authors. So it will be coming up very soon. Please stay tuned for more. Please do subscribe, share, like, comment, and forward if you like my video. Thank you very much.